welcome back to my channel and to the first official Awesome Mix podcast. It's going to be a little bit of a weird mixture of vlog and podcast type thing because I've been meaning to start a podcast for quite a while now, but I do find the idea of speaking in front of a camera like this for an hour a little bit daunting. What I want to do today is to talk you through some of my projects that I've made in April and also show you my progress as I was making them. So if that's something you think you'll be interested in, then stick around and keep watching. April is really one of my favourite months and not only because it's my birthday. I turned 27 this year, which wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I was previously quite unhappy with the feeling like life was sort of on pause while we were all stuck inside during lockdown, but I think I'm finally getting over it and I think I can't change it, so I'm simply going to try and enjoy my time at home. Now, something which has made this a lot more fun is my boyfriend, who has been making me lots of lovely coffees, and he even baked me my favourite cake this month, which, by the way, is a lemon drizzle. <laughs> Although spring could never overtake autumn as my favourite season, I have been enjoying the mix of warmer sunny days and a little bit of rain, it's given me the chance to wear some of my favourite knits before I put them away for summer. And I do find that sitting inside and knitting while it rains is also fast becoming one of my absolute favourite afternoon activities. Now for a quick little bit of my personal knitting history. I did try and teach myself to knit when I was about 17 so 10 years ago now, which seems like a really long time, but it wasn't until about uh, just under two years ago that I picked up the needles again and I really fell in love with knitting. When I tried to knit when I was 17, all I made was a pretty ridiculous sort of mini scarf that I put on my cap, so not very successful. Um, but then when I tried again to uh, just under two years ago, I made, I started off making a little coaster, so it was about that big and it was just garter stitch, but I thought, okay, I'm finally understanding how this actually works, and I set myself a mission of making a Christmas present for four members of my family that year, and by the end of that year, so by December, I had made, I think, a shawl, um, two hats, two scarves and yeah the hideous coaster as well um, and yeah I was just totally hooked from them. Um, I have with me my project that I'm probably most proud of from when I was learning to knit and it is a very simple scarf. It was actually supposed to be a ribbed type scarf but it <laughs> I missed out one step, so it does kind of bunch together. However, I just really love the colour of this and I find I still wear this all the time when it's a little bit cold and I want a pop of red um, and whenever I wear it I do still feel really really proud. I mean you can see it was in quite a thick yarn, I think this was West Yorkshire Spinners Retreat. Um, I can't remember the colourway. Uh, if I find it when I look it up, I will pop it in the description below. But yeah, so this was one of my first projects. I'll try it on and show you. Yeah, just a super simple scarf, but still something that I think every beginner knitter should make for themselves. A chunky, cute scarf in a lovely colour. Now, in keeping with the sort of mood of spring, I've been clearing out some of my scraps in my stash this April. I say stash, but I don't really have much of one because I do try and make it a rule not to buy things while I still have yarn left over. More out of financial necessity than anything else, really. But I do find it very satisfying when I finish up all of those tiny little bits and pieces on small projects. I've been keeping a lot of my leftovers in this old wooden wine box. It's a great home for them. As I've been using up a lot of little odd bits and scraps, most of my projects are gonna be a bit smaller this month, but they've been no less lovely to make. 
out the first project that I want to show you this month was not technically knit in April but it was live on Ravelry in April because it's my own pattern and I released it on the first and this is the Roman beanie um, named after Rome of course which is where we are now and all of the beautiful columns that I see when I look up at the sky and the gorgeous ornate tops of buildings and it's quite a wide um, brimmed beanie it's very comfy and cosy um, maybe a little bit hot for the weather here now but I still enjoy wearing it on a crisp morning um, I'll try it on and show you so yeah as you can see it is a cosy, comfy beanie with a low of cable detail here. Um, the cable detail really is quite simple. I am not a very advanced cable knitter, so I did design it sort of based on how I would intuit doing it. And I had a lot of input from all of my lovely testers in how to more easily explain this to anybody who wants to knit it. Um, if you're interested at all, I will be popping all of the names and the links to my Ravelry and to my website down below so you can have a look at all of my projects and see the specifics of the yarn and the colour and everything like that. The yarn here is actually left over from my Holly sweater, which I'll try and add a image of um, in a second. And I had a ball of this brown, this beautiful Drops Air chocolatey shade left over. And I just thought it would make the most gorgeous soft hat. And as you can see, the yarn really is soft and lovely and fluffy. There are lots of sort of little wispy bits, but I think that gives it such a lovely character. And it doesn't itch when I wear it against my head at all. Um, Drops Air is a blend of alpaca and I think a little bit of polymid just to give it strength to the tube-like structure that the alpaca fibres are spun into. Next finished object on my list is this really, really lovely pair of Into the Woods socks by Melody Hoffman or Mandarines. And these are such a lovely pattern. They've been on my to knit list for such a long time because I find the little tree design just really, really pretty. And she uses it on quite a lot of her other things as well. I think she has a scarf and a cowl pattern and also a jumper pattern that has that same little tree design. And it's very, very simple, but I just think that it looks really, really lovely and simply beautiful, actually, is how I would describe it. Now these, I also used up some drops yarn. It was the drops special sock yarn. So I think that's called drops fable. And I believe that the shade for these was beige. And you can see it's quite a nice color. It's almost a little bit pinky, sort of a light beigey brown pink, but I quite like it. Um, you'll soon uh, know about me if I do more of these podcasts that I do like my neutrals. Um, I like knitting things which will be classic pieces in my wardrobe um, because I can't uh, afford really to have a very, very extensive wardrobe. I like to make pieces that I know will go with loads and loads of things and that I'll get loads of wear out of. Also for these socks, I made a little tutorial video, my first video on my channel, about how to create cardboard blockers to get a better shape for your knitted socks. Because I find when they come off the needles, they do look a little bit bunched and a little bit sad. So giving them that good block is really great. And you can make those cardboard blockers. Um, I'll try and link to that video. Um, and you can make those cardboard blockers with anything that you have around the house, just cardboard tape and yeah, that's about it really. Chop it out and tape it up so it's waterproof and then put your socks on it after they've been washed. The next piece that I'm actually so, so proud of um, because I had to frog a couple of times because I just wasn't being patient enough with the pattern. I was trying to rush ahead. I was thinking, oh, I just don't really get this but I really wanted to make it 
because I've been seeing it on Instagram and I just really like it. Um, and the pattern is the collar number two and I'll hold it up for you to see. So that is the finished collar and it's sort of a fairly simple lacy piece that goes around with lots of my shirts and t-shirts and it just adds a little pop to a lot of my outfits. Um, I really wanted to make this because I've been seeing a lot of collars around recently in all of the shops, like quite big fancy things. I also always think about um, Princess Diana when I think of big collars because I was watching The Crown and she had a lot of outfits with these massive 80s fancy collars and I was just really feeling that vibe I think when I cast this on so yeah I struggled a little bit with it um, mainly because I wanted to just get going get knitting and I wasn't really paying attention to what the pattern was telling me um, yeah another thing you'll find out about me is I am a very impatient person um, I joke with my boyfriend and I say it's because I'm an Aries but yes, I'm very impatient, uh, which is funny for somebody who knits as much as I do, considering knitting is such a meditative and calm and slow process. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to be more patient and I'm trying to read the instructions properly because I do know that the instructions will tell me. <laughs> anyway, I'll add in some uh, pictures of me wearing this for you so you can see it up close. It's really lovely. I'm really happy with the button that I chose for it. I think that it really, really goes well with the collar and it's a smaller button than what the person actually recommended. But I didn't want something so big because I didn't want it to detract from the lace work of the collar itself, um, as the collar is quite fancy. So I would probably wear this with slightly more casual um, outfits just to add that little fancy detail. It's a little bit of a weird piece. Um, my boyfriend thinks that it makes me look like the fan neck dinosaur out of Jurassic Park, which I'm not immensely pleased with <laughs> as a comparison, but you know what? I like it and what does he know anyway? So yeah, I enjoyed making this. Um, it's very cute. If you want a collar, I think that this is one of the best patterns for it. I've looked at some of the other ones and I just don't think that they give that same sort of lacy frilly um, edge effect. Uh, I'll insert the images of me pinning and blocking this because it does need quite a good block to keep those edges nice. Um, and I actually don't have any blocking pins. I only have uh, my <laughs> little pin stitch markers and quite a lot of sewing needles because I got a pack of them but they actually do work and I pinned it all down on a clean towel as you can see and yeah it, it worked really well by the next day it was all dry and the lovely edge details were staying in place so a success overall I would say the final finished object or finished objects this month is actually some scrunchies. Um, if you have seen any of my videos, you might have come across my scrunchie video, which I did a couple of weeks back. And I just explain how you can make um, a scrunchie like this one, which is an Aran, Ra Aran weight scrunchie. Um, this one is using Rowan's felted tweed, the Aran one. And it's a really, really beautiful yarn. Uh, you can see some of the detail here, the flecks of blue that come through with this creamy colour. I really, really like this yarn. And I had a tiny bit left over because, as I mentioned before, I made my dad a hat for Christmas. So I didn't have enough to really do anything much with, but I thought that it would make a really cute scrunchie and it would go with a lot of my other neutral toned <laughs> Um, knit items. This is another one that I've made and this one is in Drops Air and Drops Kid Silk so it's super super soft and fluffy and lovely. Um, again an Aran weight um, because I do like my scrunchies to be a bit thicker and I wanted a very quick project that I could finish in sort of a couple of hours 
and sit and just knit it, knit it, knit, and then seam it together. Um, so these are really good for that, and they have used up some of my scraps, which I'm very, very happy about, in keeping with the spring cleaning mood. I think that in the coming months, I'll probably have um, a lot more larger objects to show you, because I am a sweater knitter, really, at heart. Um, that's my favourite thing to knit is big jumpers and snuggly things and I have a few things planned for the next month but I've just got to put in a yarn order and get it all ready because there aren't that many yarn shops I found in the centre of Rome and the variety um, of yarn is not very extensive so I will order it online and there have been a few postal delays. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed seeing my small projects nonetheless anyway, and I have a few more works in progress that I'm going to show you right now. My first work in progress, I have cast on Petite Knit's everyday sock design, and here I'll just show you the stretchy cuff. I am doing the stripy version, so I'm using two colours of yarn. This lovely chocolatey shade and the rest of this shade which is what was left over from my Into the Woods socks and I think these will look really really lovely together so the main colour will be this dark brown and then my stripes will be in this slightly more um, pale beigey tone. Um, I think they'll look really really nice. Now one thing I have to say about this pattern by Petite Knit is that the I was a bit disappointed when I opened it up because the placement of the stripes that she's done on her socks in the images of the pattern they are not actually included so there aren't any instructions to tell you where to place your stripes to get a similar effect to what she's got now that means that the pattern is essentially just a simple sock pattern I don't necessarily have anything against it being a simple sock pattern, but my expectation was that it was going to be a stripy sock pattern, and I guess I have enough experience to probably have made the simple socks by myself anyway, without having consulted the pattern. Um, nonetheless, uh, her pattern is quite insightful and very, very beginner friendly, so if you're wanting to dive into sock knitting, I do recommend having a look at her pattern. Um, she explains things very well, she always links some videos. They aren't actually in English, the videos that she links on her website, but you can follow along and sort of understand. I mean, my first ever <laughs> jumper knit was a, a petite knit thing, and it was actually a slipover, the Stockholm slipover, and I <laughs> had to learn a lot of new techniques by following the videos on her website. So yeah, you don't have to listen to it in English. It does work just following along and looking at the way that she is knitting things. So those videos are very informative and quite useful. So once these socks are done, I will put some pictures of them up on my Instagram. My Instagram is the best place to find the updates um, that I kind of frequently, sort of frequently, I mean twice a week I post on there. But yeah, that's the best place to find the updates for my progress. Um, hopefully a lot more progress next month, but yeah, fingers crossed, we'll see. <laughs> Rome has really been very warm this month, so I've been taking any chance I get to wear my heavier jumpers, because I have a lot of lovely knit jumpers that I just really, really, really want to squeeze a few days wear out of before it gets very hot, because in Rome it goes up to sort of 30 plus almost every day in the summer and yeah I'm I'm just not a summer girl I suppose I prefer autumn and winter when I can wrap up nice and a lot of woolly things but nonetheless Rome has been very beautiful in spring we've been taking a lot of long walks I've been sitting out on the terrace and trying to get back into reading more um, a little background on me I am a um, MA graduate in modern and contemporary literature, so I used to read a lot. Uh, I read less now since I've graduated because I try and find the time between work and knitting, 
but it's still one of my absolute favourite things to do. I had just tidied my stuff away and put everything back in its place when I realised that there was one whip that I forgot to mention. Um, I thought that there weren't enough and I was thinking, yeah, I definitely made more this month. And so the <laughs> forgotten whip, sad, yes, um, is a little crop top. So this is the little secret crop top by, I think she's called Jessie May or Jessie Made Designs. Um, it's really cute. I have knit it with two strands of fingering weight yarn. I think this is the Drops Flora and it's in this lovely beige neutral tone. When it stretches out, it looks really neat and pretty. Um, I haven't finished this one yet because I've actually run out of yarn. Um, as you can see, this is all I've got left, so I will be running out and I need enough to do the straps. So there's just nowhere near enough here. And until I've ordered some more, I won't be able to finish it. So yeah, I hope to update you with progress on this one very, very soon. It shouldn't take me very long. It's a really sweet and quick knit, very satisfying to make, very, very simple, but I really like the way that it actually hugs my figure. Because it's this um, rib pattern, it stretches out really well and I think that it could be quite flattering on a lot of people. Now I ran out of yarn because I'm making the longer one because I don't really like crop tops. I know they're very fashionable at the moment but I just don't enjoy them. <laughs> I think that they look a bit rubbish on me. Um, they look good on other people but they just don't suit me so this is not going to be a crop top, it's going to be a camisole instead. I'll wear it on its own in the summer probably, maybe with jeans or a pair of shorts and I'm thinking that in winter I can also wear it under my knitted things and it will give me that extra layer of warmth and comfort because it's this really nice yarn, Drops Flora. Um, yeah, most of the yarns that I've used this, mo this month have been Drops just because I am familiar with Drops from when I was knitting in the UK so I placed an order to get a lot of Drops yarn this month. If you're in need of a good and um, affordable natural yarn that has the softness of alpaca, some fluffiness, um, but also the sort of sturdiness and stitch definition of, of wool, I would really recommend Drops Flora at, actually. Um, I've used it in several projects and I find it's very, very reliable. It's very soft and just really lovely. Flora also looks really good when held with a strand of their kid silk mohair, which I've used to make my Stockholm slip over. It's really, really pretty and fluffy and gorgeous. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's truly a delight to be able to talk about my knitting projects, and I hope that next month I'll have something a little bit bigger to show you all. Um, I'm not sure how frequent these videos will be. I'm still debating as to whether I'll do one a month, like with this one for the whole month of April or whether I'll do one every two weeks. It depends how much progress I have to show you and how much time I have in between work but it's been really fun making this and showing you a little bit of my life here in Rome and some of my tiny spring cleaning stash projects. Um, so subscribe if you're interested in hearing more from me and let me know um, if there are any ideas that you have for how I can use up any more of my little scrap bits. I really want to use this ball of Rome felted tweed, um, the thinner one, so I think that's a DK weight. I really want to use up that and I've been looking for a pattern for it, so if you have any recommendations do pop them below. Um, I'm thinking maybe a hat, you know. I'm quite obsessed with hats. I think I'm definitely yeah, uh, a hat knitter. <laughs> More than socks or any other small piece, hats are my thing. Um, and my boyfriend has told me, don't knit any more hats. Um, yeah, I don't have all my hats here, but maybe in the next few weeks I might do a hat video <laughs> where I show you all of my lovely hats that I've knit. 
anyway thank you so much for being here and for listening and for taking an interest in my knitting um it's been really fun and i hope to see you back soon bye